Hey everyone, Solid is here, welcome back. This video has been a long time coming, I have had it planned for quite a while, but so far everything else kept me pretty busy. So I finally decided to pause my other projects and focus on getting this one out, especially since almost all of my videos use these plugins, having a complete dedicated guide just makes sense at this point. And the fact is it will make things much easier for both you and me as we move into what's coming next on this channel. So talking about next, congratulations to Expedition 33 for winning the Game Awards and I know they dropped a thank you update and the game is officially Steam Deck verified now which is pretty cool, I'm testing it right now. So the follow up update to my ultimate performance guide is coming next. We'll feature some additional quality improvements so keep an eye on the channel. This one is definitely going to be interesting. Okay, now in this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about LSFG and Deckiframe Gen, how to install and get both plugins working properly on Steam Deck, including how to use OptiScala and FSR4, and how to unlock the 70Hz refresh rate on your LCD deck or lower input lag while using frame generation. So let's begin with Decky Loader. For those who don't know, in short, it's basically the primary plugin manager on Steam Deck or Steam OS, allows you to browse, install, customize, and manage a wide range of community made plugins, including LSFG and Decifram Gen. Before we proceed, ensure your Steam Deck is fully up to date. Now let's go ahead and open browser, type Decky Loader from the official website, click download. From download folder, double click it and click continue. A password prompt will show up and if you haven't set a password on your user account, go ahead and open system settings from taskbar, scroll down all the way to the bottom and click users, click change password and set anything easy to remember and click set password. Now go back to the installer window, type the same password here and click ok. I have it already installed but for a new installation you'll see two options here release and pre-release. Just select the release branch and click ok. Once the installation is done, close it and switch to gaming mode. Now press the three dot button. At the bottom you'll see this new plugin icon and this is the decky loader we just installed. All installed plugins will show up here and will be manageable from this menu. At the top you'll see two icons. The first one takes you to the plugin store where you can browse and install a variety of available plugins. The second icon open settings where you can update Decky Loader and uninstall any plugins. Alright, now let's move on to Lossless Scaling. Now before you install the LSFG plugin, you need to get the Lossless Scaling app from Steam Store. The plugin is free but the app is paid and costs about 7 bucks, sometimes goes half the price on sale which is totally worth it for Steam Deck even if you are not too excited for frame gen. This app with LSFG plugin can sometimes pull some real magic. And a great example of that is my Expedition 33 Ultimate Performance Guide. If you have seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so once you get it, download and install it on your internal SSD, not the SD card or any external drive. I already have the plugin installed, so let me quickly show you how to do a clean uninstallation first. From the plugin settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and click uninstall LSFG VK. Then go back, go to Deck Loader settings. From plugins tab, click the three dot icon next to Deck LSFG VK and select uninstall. This is how you do a clean uninstallation. Alright, now let's reinstall it. Head to the plugin store, search for LSFG. Here it is. Click install. From here, click install LSFG VK. It is start is recommended. So let's do that. Now I'm not too technical, but I'll try to quickly explain all these LSFG options in the quickest and simplest way I understand based on my experience. This way you'll get the basics and be able to experiment with different games on your own. So the very first option is FPS multiplayer, basically the switch to turn frame generation on. You can choose to double, triple or quadruple your FPS, but on Steam Deck 2x is usually the best to avoid excessive lag or visual glitches. You can also save different profiles with your custom preset settings. 
So switching to specific settings uh, before launching any game is super quick and you don't have to change everything every time. Next is Fluid Scale. It basically controls how carefully LSFG figures out motion when multiplying your FPS. In theory, lowering it can improve performance a bit, but honestly I haven't really noticed any difference, it just makes the image quality worse. Higher values gives the best image, and 80% is what the plugin devs recommend. I usually keep it there, though bumping it up to 100 can sometimes slightly reduce ghosting or artifacts, but it totally depends on the game. Keeping it at 80 does the job just fine. Then there is basic PS cap. I just keep it off because with FIFA VSync here turned on, the game's FPS is already locked to half your screen refresh rate. So on a 60Hz display, it locks at 30fps, 70Hz is 35 and on 90Hz OLED display, it's 45fps, which then doubles with the 2x multiplier. And then we have performance mode. I mostly keep it on because it keeps LSFG system load lighter, so it doesn't affect game performance much. I only turn it off if a game is light, runs very well and has a high base FPS. In that case, turning it off can give you a slightly better image and overall frame generation quality. HDR mode. Well, I guess we all pretty much familiar with this one. Turn it on if you have an OLED and if the game supports it. Enable WSI. So if a game looks choppy or behaves weird, turning this on can sometimes fix it. I haven't personally run into those kind of issues so far, so I just keep it off. The next one I keep it on. It's for older games that are only 32 bits supported. For example, LSFG won't work on all those Batman Arkham games, Tomb Raider series, and many other older games. So for classics, you need this one in a vault. Disable Steam Deck mod. Some games hide graphic settings on Steam Deck that you can normally see and access on PC and I hate it when they do that. Just unnecessary crap, it just makes tweaking harder. So this option simply unlocks everything. I usually keep it on unless I need to use the native Steam Deck graphics preset in a game then I turn it off. Mango Hard Workaround. It basically does what it says here. For example, if you launch a game from desktop mode, turning this on makes the Mango Hard FPS overlay shows up in game, which can be useful. It can also help with some issues when using 2x frame generation. For me, I haven't really needed it, so I keep it off. Disable VK Basalt. If you are using any reshared mods or other decky plugins, they can sometimes conflict with LSFG, so disabling this helps prevent those conflicts. And I will zinc for OpenGL games. Again, this one mostly for older games that only supports OpenGL instead of DirectX or Vulkan. So use it only if needed. And finally, all you need to do is copy this launch option, open the game's properties, paste it into the launch option. And once you hit play, frame generation should kick in. Alright, next, let's move on to Decky Frame Gen. So Decky Frame Gen basically lets Steam Deck use some features that normally works on NVIDIA GPUs, for example DLSS upscaling, NVIDIA frame generation, reflex low latency, and it does that by automatically installing a mod called OptiScaler. It can replace native upscalers, create a pass-through, and even enable FSR4 in games and devices like Steam Deck that don't officially support it. This is the simplest way I can phrase it. Again, let me show you how to do a clean installation first, since I have it already installed. Before removing the plugin, it's best practice to first remove it from any game where you are currently using the DeckFMGen command. A fresh install or plugin update can make the previous version incompatible, which may prevent the game from launching. So to do this, copy the unpatch command and paste it into the game's launch option. Run the game once. This will remove all existing OptiScala files from the game's installation folder. Verify the game's files via the game's properties. Now you can safely remove the plugin by clicking remove OptiScala mod, then uninstalling it from the decky loader settings. This ensures there won't be any conflicts when you reinstall or update the plugin fresh. Now this plugin is available on the Decky store, but it's not the latest release here. For now, I would recommend you to manually download it from the official GitHub page. You'll find all links in the description box. Let's switch back to desktop mode. From GitHub page, click here and this is the latest devil version right now. Click DeckyFrameGen.zip from here. Once the download is done, just close your browser and switch back to gaming mode. Go to the Decky Loader settings, 
from general tab scroll all the way down and you'll see this developer mode turn it on now the developer tab will pop up on the left select it click browse tap the downloads folder from here and you should see the dekifemgen.zip we just downloaded click it and click install wait until it's done then dekifemgen should show up on the plugin list click it click setup of discolor mode and that completes the installation now just copy the launch option from here or if you want to use both dkfmgen and lsfg at the same time you can just copy the lsfg plus dkfg combined command from lsfg plugin and paste it to the game's launch option now go back and open the controller layout settings click edit layout go to trackpads set the right trackpad as mouse and set the click function as left mouse click then set the left trackpad as single button and the click function as insert key. You can also set the insert key to any of the back buttons if you want. I just use it with my left trackpad. Now once you hit play, all the OptiScalar files will be generated in the game's installation folder and pressing the insert key should bring up the OptiScalar menu in game. From here, you can activate FSR4 or any other available upscaler and also increase the sharpness level if you want. Also a quick note, OptiScalar menu sometimes doesn't appear when the insert key is pressed but if you quickly turn off frame gen and turn it on again from LSFG just once, it pops up. Now some games might need a bit of extra tweakings to activate FSR4 and I have already shown a few different ways to do that in some of my previous videos. So yeah, that's basically everything you need to know about deck frame gen. Now the main reason to use DekiFemGen is for OptiScalar and the fact that it installs automatically with a simple launch command. However, sometimes I ran into an issue after updating DekiFemGen, the game wouldn't launch unless I first uninstall OptiScalar from the game using the DekiFemGen install command and then reinstall it again. It can be a bit confusing when a game suddenly stops launching and you have forgotten that you recently updated the plugin. So yeah, that happened to me before. So there is another alternative method to enable OptiScalar without relying on DekiFemGen. You can simply copy the files manually into the game's installation directory right where the main exe is located. I mostly use this method because it gives me more control, the game doesn't randomly stop working and I don't have to run the game with the command constantly. Plus some games don't work properly with the DekiFemGen command anyway. I've already made a couple of videos showing this alternative method for those cases. The process really simple. Once any game has been run with the dekifemgen command, OptiScalar files get deployed to the game's exe directory. I made a backup of those files and whenever I need them for a new game, I copy and paste them into that game's exe folder. And OptiScalar works right away without dekifemgen or any command line at all. You'll also find a link in the description box to these backup files. Just download, extract and copy paste, ready to go. Which might make the process a bit easier for you, it's just pretty solid alternative. To remove it, just copy and replace all these files again so everything gets selected then just hit delete. After that, verify the game files in Steam, same process as before we did for DekiFemGen. Now one thing we all pretty much hate about frame generation is input lag, right? And since many of us use the LCD Steam Deck, by default we are stuck with a 60Hz refresh rate, unlike the OLED's 90Hz. The problem with 60Hz is that when you use LSFG, the FPS gets locked to half the screen's refresh rate and generating frames at a locked 60fps usually creates noticeable input lag, where any refresh rate higher than 60 improves things a lot. So this next trick for those who have the LCD Steam Deck, it basically overclocks your native 60Hz screen to 70Hz and I promise you'll feel a big improvement in input lag. I've been using it for a long time and in my opinion, it's a must-have feature for LCD deck owners. The script is called Refresh Rate Unlocker. The original writer of this script shared it on his YouTube channel, 10 Minute Steam Deck Gamer. Huge shout out to him for the great work. So from desktop mode, click the start button, search for console, open it. All the script lines are already written in the description box, so just copy and paste them one by one and press the A button after each. When you get this confirmation prompt, I'd suggest you to read it carefully and then press yes. Your deck will automatically switch to gaming mode and if you check the performance tab, you should now see it running at 70Hz. As simple as that. If you run into any issues or have any question, there is a github page where you can reach out for support. To uninstall it, navigate to home folder, 
Click and turn on show hidden files from here. Open .config folder, game scope, scripts and delete this 70hz.lua file. And with that we are finally done with this long detail guide. Hopefully I explained everything clearly since this video is going to be a very important part of a lot of my upcoming projects. Drop a comment if you have any question or just want to say hi. Give a like to the video if it helps. Stay with the channel and most importantly stay safe. See you in the next one.